Hello, my name is Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town television program. My guest today, Chris Cahoon from the Monterey Museum of Art. Welcome, sir. Thank you. So, the museum now celebrating its 60 years. That's right. Uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's a, uh, it's a good time to be 60. It's a good time to be 60, and uh, and let's talk about you a, b a bit. You came sure. from Illinois, and h how did you get here? And, and let's talk about what you do here. Sure. So I'm the manager of education and public engagement at the museum. Uh, I came from Illinois. I was at a, a, in a artist in residence program out there uh, at Eastern Illinois University, uh, kind of home base. Uh, it was actually great. I got to to teach in my sixth grade class where I discovered art. Uh, so it was a fun little full circle moment there. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Uh, um, so I'm an artist myself, uh, is how I came into the museum world, uh, and have done education, especially with youth of around the world, uh, different sorts, and so this was a perfect fit out here. Yeah. There's a big difference in, the, in a museum situation, of actually, uh, or a museum that is art-based, to have somebody who is actually a practicing artist from someone who's coming from a different level. You have a whole different level of compassion to the other artist, yeah. uh, and you have an in, uh, understanding of both sides of it, and people who don't have both sides of it, there's, there's, there's a big difference in that. That's true, and, and museums tend to, especially art museums, tend to gather artists, because um, we all want to be around art and yeah. inspired by art, so there are actually a number of practicing artists uh, at the Monterey Museum of Art. Yeah. So, which is uh, so something that hasn't always been the situation, but something that I uh, uh, I think Stuart has had a, mm -hmm. a a big hand in doing that. Uh, Certainly, and uh, it's it's been very exciting there. I, th I think you've come at a very exciting time here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, we uh, almost daily uh, people will come in and and talk about. It. There's just uh, kind of an excitement and a buzz and a, a fresh wind blowing through the museum. Well, one of the things that's uh, coming up is the um, the David Hockney show, mm -hmm. and this is uh, I, I saw it at the De Young, uh, the the overall thing, and it was powerful and it was large scale. Sure, it was audacious uh, yeah, it was and the, it was impactful. David Hockney, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it was David Hockney big, yeah. <laughs> scaled up. Yeah. So let, let's talk about the excitement about that and what that is. Sure. Yeah, we're we're uh, super excited to get uh, Hockney to the museum, uh, and we've been working on it for several months, of course, and and uh, it's been a little difficult to keep it quiet, you know, and, until we could make it official. Uh, but we're doing David Hock Hockney's Yosemite, so many of the works that were in the De Young uh, and a, a few others. Uh, so it's two big things for our 60th, you know, our di Diamond Jubilee is David Hockney and Yosemite. You know, what could what could get more California than that? Yeah. And let's let's talk about yeah. the the photographic aspect mm -hmm. of that, the other half of that show. Sure, sure. So paired with that, we're going to open a show of Yosemite photographs from our collection, and so it'll be Ansel Adams and um, Weston and, and a lot of the local photographs. Uh, we also just acquired a Catherine Opie, beautiful uh, photograph that will be in the, the collection too. So it'll, it'll be a nice uh, Yosemite moment uh, for the museum. So there's just been a lot of, uh, it, it, you know, we went to, to Lily Yu's uh, uh, lecture the other <coughs> night. Uh, it's the second lecture of, 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 of hers that I've seen there sure. and mm -hmm. other stuff that's going on there. And there's just a, uh, you know, a vitality that's going on. And the other thing, let me say, uh, as we discussed off camera, we walked in there and uh, all the uh, abstra abstract expressionist work was out that we haven't seen, that's been buried mm -hmm. away, hidden in the vaults for years. It was the first time I've even seen that collection wielded out. It was just so nice to see that fresh look in there. And I know that you had a lot to do behind that. So yeah, I get to do the programs around that, and uh, so. But yeah, thanks. We we hear that quite a bit. Where you know, where did all these works come from? Uh, and actually, since you've been in there, we just hung two new shows, and there's another one going up today. Um, so it's always good to to come visit uh, often because there's new stuff. Um, and uh, it's amazing how much art the peninsula has, and the area has, and, and of course California has. And so we get to highlight that. Uh, but yeah, beautiful Abex stuff up right now, and more. So. Yeah. It, isn't it amazing how fresh it looked? Yeah, it 
really is it is it because we are and, and, I, and I, again is it because we're both partial to it or does it just look fresh I, 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 I can't you know it's funny you have to you can't sometimes take yourself out of it and your own predilections or does it really look good yeah I, I think uh, I think all the above uh, yeah. for sure you know you, you're used to seeing one thing and then uh, something new comes up but uh, you know it's a genre that I particularly enjoy and we have a great preparator that that makes just does a great job making shows look good uh-huh so. and uh, so you've had uh, you've had the opportunity to dig through the vaults and see this and, and the other thing that I've, I've noticed that's happening over there is you are changing the walls a lot mm -hmm. You're yep. you're not you're not just putting it up and letting it hang forever. No, even our our longest shows. So Hockney is only going to be about three months long, um, which isn't really all that long. It's not long. Yeah, no. and uh, we have our front gallery, the currents and flux spaces for local artists that we feature, and that's monthly. Um, so we're always changing shows. So so that's really excitement and. So you know what? What else excites you about what's going on? Let's let's talk about the direction. Let's articulate it a little bit. Sure. Uh, there there are a few ways that we're looking to take the museum that I'm super excited about. Um, one with the the Hockney and Yosemite, um, it kind of shows that we're embracing our area. You know the natural wonders and the beauty that are out here and our natural resources, and looking more at conservation and ecology and science and showing how the arts and and uh, natural resources um, are closely integrated. So uh, we have some programming coming up where we're hoping to, to have some lectures uh, from uh, conservationists, from scientists, uh, and artists collaborating together. Um, another uh, exciting direction is just uh, being more inclusive of the community um, in, in all that that entails. But um, I'm super excited to get out into the community rather than waiting for the community to come to us. Uh, we have several programs to, to get out um, and, and around the county, not just the peninsula, but uh, since I've been here just over a year now, I hear a lot of people talk about the lettuce curtain and it kind of becomes an alibi of, well, we've talked about it and so we've acknowledged it. But no, let's, let's talk about, hey, how do, we, um, how do we acknowledge our community and who we are as a county? and getting out into the Salinas Valley. And um, I have some programs to be able to go out into schools and communities if we can find the right venues. And I can't wait to drive the two hours to Bradley and uh, do programming you know, in South County. Um, so that's uh, very exciting to me as well. So you seem to taking on a, uh, the museum's taking on a, a mantle of importance, <laughs> trying to really be something more than just a tourist destination. Mm -hmm trying to really be the, the, a vital center. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and with an important mission, and that's, uh, yeah. that's, that's exciting. Yeah, and I'm, I'm biased, of course, but I think we're the premier cultural institution in the area, and so there's kind of a responsibility in that mm -hmm. to, um, to foster culture and to foster the arts especially, uh, but to foster community and to lead the way in those things. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's very easy for a um, s small regional museum to be lazy. Mm. Uh, and a lot of people won't notice the difference. You can just hang stuff and open the door. And, uh, but to go out and really try to go after big game mm. is, uh, is exciting. But you've come here for that. Yeah, yeah, that's what drew me to the job, to see Stuart as executive director, to see his, division, his uh, vision, and uh, to see that, yeah, He's anything but lazy, and, and our staff um, are anything but. Um, we have a very, very dynamic staff that I, I love to get to work with. Yeah, well, so, uh, so uh, let's talk about, okay, so now you guys are doing your end. Um, how, how, how do we, in the creative community, uh, and on the, both the creative community and the supporters of that community, uh, come in and, and create the kind of dynamism that that you need? How do we help you? Sure. Participation. Uh, you know, we, um, we love to create programs that hopefully people want to come to, and that seems to be showing in, in uh, people starting to attend those more and more. Uh, our free family fun days, we just had 750 people come through, which was a record for us, so that's great. Uh, but to show up, um, and we've expended a lot of resources to, 
get to where we are and build that momentum to where we're heading. Um, but when you expend resources, you need to bring resources in. Um, so participating on all levels, whether attendance or um, showing in our, our um, local artist galleries. Um, we have our, our gala coming up, which will be great, celebrating our Diamond Jubilee. Um, and membership is huge. Uh, in fact, the David Hockney show, the opening, uh, will be for members. Uh, and so if you want to get in on the front end, you know, it's, uh, and it's, it's well worth it. Uh, the membership's well worth it at the museum because we're always uh, providing new programming uh, for our members because we love them. Well, let's, uh, the other thing that's of, of interesting to me at the moment, so mm -hmm. the, the um, Pacific Street, you know, I, I don't know if everybody knows, but there's two locations to the, uh, to, to the, to the, to the museum, mm -hmm. uh, La Mirada and the Pacific Street. Mm -hmm. Pacific Street is becoming the base of operations, and you're talking about the idea of, of uh, La Mirada becoming artist in residence, which is very, very exciting. Let, let's let's talk about that just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So that's the vision. Uh, we're calling it the La Mirada Cultural Center, uh, and uh, wanting to do turn it into a place of significance with scholarship um, and culture, and so we have room eventually for three artists to be in residence. And not just artists, but um, scholars, <laughs> scientists again, yeah, science. um, centered, centered around the visual arts, of course, yes. but um, to see how uh, collaboration can happen in creative ways there together. Um, and as well as putting our, uh, hopefully putting our archives in there, having open storage, places where people can, uh, can come and study California arts. Um, and, and of course we have the, the amazing Rose Garden and, and the, um, the outside there is beautiful to behold as well. So, uh, place of inspiration, place of scholarship. I find uh, so. Before I get into your personal art, sure. Um, you know, in the in the museum world, I find it just very very exciting um, to be putting science and art together, because science is not easily explainable. Mm -hmm. the, the art the artist articulates. <laughs> And and the science finds the, you know, the science does the science and the art mm -hmm. art articulates the vision so people can understand the science and makes the science palatable. Mm -hmm. And it's such a um, important dynamic. And and I know that that's something that you brought into your personal work. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 kind of explain what you do. And I and I have pictures, so we'll be able to <laughs> see it a little bit. Sure. So let's let's talk about what you're what you're doing. Sure. My work is conceptual, uh, conceptually based. Kind of revolves around entropy uh, and the, I guess the second law of thermodynamics that everything's going from order to disorder. Uh, but how does that work out in our lives? And I think art does provide metaphors and experiences for us to understand. The science behind those things, um, quite how, and how to how, how to accept it, you know, right? Yeah, because you because yeah. entropy always wins. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. We fight against it with everything we have, you know. Well, and how much, so, you know. so if if you don't understand what you're saying, ex ex break it down a little bit. What that means? Sure, sure. So with the with the entropy, everything is is um, deteriorating. You know, I mean, our bodies are the prime example of that, right? You know, and and you look at how we fight against it and all the anti aging. Um, medications and, and surgeries and creams, uh, and from a museum context, you know we're trying to conserve paintings, and that's why um, paintings are kept in climate-controlled vaults, and and we have conservators to repair things. Uh, but science says, you know, eventually things break down. Um, you look at the the great marble monuments of ancient Greece, and uh, you know the the Nike of Samothrace. And she's missing her limbs and her her head, and um, and you see that that it used to be polychrome, it used to be painted, but those things have been worn and, away. And, and there's beauty in it. it. Yeah, there's there's an yeah an amazing beauty in it, and that's that's part of the one of the things I love is uh, coming across a, a tree that's been eroded for years and being able to see the beauty and the patterning on the inside that you wouldn't be able to see from the outside. So this is a, a little Japanese, it's, it's a little wabi-sabi. There's you know, a lot of wabi-sabi in yeah. there, yeah. yeah. And I, I was fortunate to live in Japan for about five years and so I'm, I'm sure there's a bit of that influence in yeah, there. Yeah, so, so. that's, uh, so this is a very exciting and um, so, so you, you say it's 2D and 3D and mm -hmm. uh, l l l and how, how did how did you evolve? How did how did this get to, to be? Um, it it was kind of in 
a discovery back in in undergrad at art school and and figuring out that um, you know if you don't gesso things then solvents and uh, um, the chemicals in your paints will eventually eat through the canvas and and just kind of wondering it was like well you know that's going to happen eventually anyway on some level and and so just um, taking that and running with it. Who who are the artists that you were looking at? Who, who who's who's really inspired you? Um, Eva Hesse, uh, for one, um, really enjoy uh, her stuff, and, and of course Duchamp with some of his mm -hmm. ready-mades and found objects. Um, kind of that, uh, in conceptually, um, you have, uh, of course, Solowit, and um, yeah, just a lot of that, that era as they were coming up and exploring materials and, and saying it's not necessarily about the picture that you produce, but the material itself. And so, so the other conversation that I've been having a lot is um, simulacrum. Mm -hmm. Is it the photograph that's going to be valuable or the thing? And I'm finding now people see the, the, the picture and they don't see the thing. Mm -hmm. And does the picture become more important than the thing? Mm -hmm. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's, yeah. it's very, <laughs> it, art's in a very fluid spot right now. Yeah, very much so. So, uh, which is exciting. Yeah, so. w w w which is exciting. And, and then are you able to, have you been able to do your work? Because that's important. <laughs> uh, very recently. I've, I just uh, completed my second piece uh, since being on the peninsula. So real estate is, uh, is a rare commodity I've found. And so finding studio space. Um, so I finally have a, a small corner of a garage that I can squeeze into and, and make a little bit of work. Because, yeah, I want to make sure that you don't fall into the trap of not doing your your art, yeah. Because uh, you know a museum will eat all your time. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's really important that you stay working. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a pleasure. Um, I'm Mark Bear. You're watching the Your Town Television Program. My guest Chris Cahoon, the Monterey Museum of Art. I get that wrong, but <laughs> anyway, uh, the Hockney Show coming, and it's exciting stuff. And you stay tuned. Mm -hmm.